The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. I'm Kengafa Kelvin, a business management instructor. As we earlier noticed on our very previous lesson, business management is a common course for all specialties at advanced income questionnaire education examination and class six, class seven in particular, which is upper six. Before entering into the main topic of the day, let's go through the homework that was given in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we were asked to give the different plans layout that are applicable in different situations and also to state and explain when suitable to put use, to put in use a line and functional layout. What were the different plans layouts that are applicable in different situations? And also to state and explain when suitable we can use a line or a functional layout. Let's start with the types. There are two main types of layouts. We have the product or the line layout. The product or line layout is a type of layout in which machines are arranged in a sequence, in a straight line, as required to produce a specific product. So it is when it is an arrangement of machines in the firm in a very straight line. And this is particularly required when we are producing a specific product. We can also call it a line, a line layout because machines are arranged generally in a straight line. The raw materials are fed at one end and at the other end we have the finished product. This is generally noticed with what we call a brewery industry, those who are engaged in the brewery industry because there is only a specific product that they, they produce like beer or juice. So they generally use what we call a product or a line layout. Line layout, why is it useful? It is useful when we talk about mass or gross production, when we talk about standardized products in an organization. We also use a line or product layout when we are talking about simple or repetitive or recurring manufacturing processes. We also use a line layout in operations of time for different processes that is more, which can be more or less equal. We also use it in a reasonable, stable demand for the product. When in a reasonable, stable demand, when there's a reasonable and stable demand or request for the product. We also use a line layout when there is continuous supply of material without interruption. When there's continuity in the supply of raw materials without interruption, we can use this type of layout. The next type of layout is what we call the process or the functional layout. It is a type of layout where all the machines are grouped in one position and they, 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 they are used for dissimilar or various types of operations. It's not like the case with the line where it is for specific product, but with the process of functional layout, we use it in function of a particular product because it can be diversified products. Like in a mill, a milling machine can have can use can, can use to, to, to grind maize can be used to grind cassava, corn, or other aspects. A functional layout is also adopted when the products are not standardized. So when the products are not standardized, we can use a functional layout. When the quantity produced is very minimal or small, we can use a functional layout in order to, we can create or open a functional layout. When we have frequent changes in the design, in the style, and also in manufacturing a product, when we have frequent changes, then we can use this type of layout. We also have a job shop type of work. When a job shop type of work is done, 
in the farm or in the factory layout, we can use a functional layout. When the, ma the machines are very expensive, we can also adapt a functional layout because we don't have enough capital to acquire a machine that will be only for a specific product. What are the qualities of a good plant's layout, be it a product or line layout or a functional or a process layout? First, they, they should be what? It should be efficient, it should be efficient space utilization. Means the space to maybe implement or to implant that layout should be really efficient. It should be flexible, means you can dismantle them at any time. It should also be accessible when you enter into the factory layout or in the floor of the factory. We should be able to move from one place to another. It should be very economic in handling because you can move from one product to another or when producing a specific product. There should be minimal movement, means you should not finish one process and go maybe 10 meters to finish another process. There should be ensured coordination. In some, they can even use robot, means when you finish one, one, one task, it should, it, the, the process should easily be, there should be chain so that it can, you can move from one task to another without any problem. We also talk about visibility. What the process layout should be visible and viable to all so that you can at least perform one, one or two tasks without any problem. Reduce discomfort. There are some layouts that are too choked up, tight. You are not, people that are working are not really at least, they are not at ease in working. So you should reduce discomfort so that at least people should feel at ease. There should be enough air conditioning for people to breathe in, 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 in the layout. So our module, we are going to continue with the module production management. Under this module, we had we had the seven main lessons. We have gone through the first lesson, which was notion of production. We have passed through quality management lesson. We have talked about lesson three production techniques. We have done product factory or plant layout. Today we are going to embark on lesson five, which is material management. Lesson six will be on material handling. I will end the production management topic with break-even analysis. Our lesson for today, fellow candidate, is on material management. Our learning outcome, our outline for our lesson of today, we are going to talk about the lesson objective. What is the objective of the lesson? Followed by previous knowledge. We are going to talk about the real-life situation or the problem statement. Learners integrated activities. We are going to do what we call application exercises, homework. Then we conclude with what we call a summary. Fellow candidates, the objective of this lesson today is to define what is material management. Because in production, we need materials. What is material management all about? We are going to give the objective of material management. We are going to explain what are the five R's of material management. We are going to identify the types of materials that are required by the production manager. We are also going to examine the types of material management, followed by discussions on the functions of materials. Then we are going to end by stating and explaining some basic principles of material management. Before entering into our main topic of the day, which is that of material management, it is worth nothing to know what what we have been discussing in the previous lesson to understand master the, very, the previous concepts. We began this module by defining the basic concepts on production. We also identify and explain production techniques. We define what is quality and what is total quality management. We talk about quality management techniques of work study and value analysis. And lastly, we explain what is factory layout. Factory layout is the arrangement of, of a plant of, of the, all the arrangement of machines and equipment in the floor of the factory. It is very important to know how to arrange machines and equipment in the floor of the factory. And we earlier said we can do that through either using two men or a combination of both. So we have a plant, we have a, a line or a product layout which is adapted for specific products. We have a process or a functional layout which is adapted for diversifying product. A good business manager should do a combination of both. That is, he should do a combination of a line layout, which is straight line, and also a process or a functional layout, because 
a factory where they produce both specific or standardized product and also they diversify or they produce non-standard products. Before I enter into our lesson, let's go through this problematic. Sinji is a young, small-scale business manager or entrepreneur in Yaoundé. She finished putting in place her small bakery. She's interested in understanding the processes involved in managing materials in order to avoid inefficiency or unnecessary wastage. How can she manage her materials or and also to avoid unnecessary wastage? She wished to know how to manage and mobilize her material resources in her bakery. How will she manage and also mobilize materials in her bakery? The various the following activities shall be, shall be undertaken in the course of this lesson. We are going to define what material management is all about. We are going to enable fellow candidate, you fellow candidate to understand what are the five areas of material management. Fellow candidate, you are, you are also going to examine and also know the types of materials that are used in the production department. We are going to know the types of material management. Explain the functions of material management. What are the main principles of material management also to mobilize material resources? Definition of concept. Material management is the planning, organizing, purchasing, storing, and providing of appropriate materials at the right quality, at the right quantity, at the right place, at the right time, in order to en enhance or to ensure coordination and control of production activities. So we plan, we organize, we procure, we store, and we provide tangible materials. And those materials should be of right quality, it should be at the right quantity, it should be at the right place and the right time in order for the production manager to be efficient and what? Effective. So that is what material management is all about. Why do we manage materials in the production units? Firstly, in order to ensure availability of optimum materials in order to ensure the optimum or the full utilization of materials because some materials in the production department if we are not if we are not careful it will worn out or depreciate when it has not even been used so knowing what material is all about how we got the material people that are working on that material will, shall use the material at full capacity material management also enables us to optimize supply and demand of material how are we going to request for material and how can it be supplied? It helps us minimize material costs because if we know how to handle materials in an organization, we will not allow it or misuse it in one way or the other. Material management enables us to minimize wastage of materials. That is, enables us to be efficient because we should not use materials anyhow because we, are, we just have them at our disposals in the production unit. It also helps enhance customer satisfaction because when materials are well used, the customers will, will, will be provided with the best and quality products. Material management also enables the efficient material planning. That is what knowing what quantity, at what, at what quality, at what place, at what time, and how to use that particular material is also very important. Material management also helps us for quality assurance. Quality is meeting the, meeting the expectation of, of, of customers. A product or a service is of quality if it meets the needs and satisfaction of customers. Let's now see fellow candidates, what are the five areas of material management? In order to ma manage material, we must master these five areas. The first arrow is we have to have, we, we need to get the right material. Are we sure that the material we're having is the right material? Is it fit suitable for that particular production of that particular product? If we want to produce BA, we should make sure that we should not have a material to produce beef ridges. We should have a right material. That material should come in at the right time so that it can be produced in the right amount. And the quality that is, that's, we should ensure that that material should give us the best quality in terms of the right price also from the right sources. So the five hours of material management, we have the right material that should be gotten at the right time in the right amount because that is quantity and also ensure that the price 
and also the source of that material should be of good quality. Let's now see what are the types of materials which a, a production manager can acquire without we'll about raw materials, which are either raw materials, which are the input which he uses in the production process. We have work in progress materials in the course of producing a good. We have work in progress material. If you produce uh, palm, palm oil, we have byproducts from palm oil, like palm kernels, which other manufacturing or pharmaceutical products can come and buy in order to produce oil. We have finished goods, which is the output. We have maintenance, repairs, and operating supplies materials. We also have material requirement planning. We have purchasing. Purchasing is a very important aspect in material management because we must make sure that we purchase the right material at the right place, at the right time, and at the right quality. Inventory control is also very important. And inventory is trying to see, see what is available in the warehouse. When the producing manager buys, procurement manager buys, he gives it to the production manager. So we have to do an inventory to know what type of materials are existing, at what quantity and what quality that's an inventory. We have material supply management. We also have to know how to, su how to supply materials. We have quality control to know if the materials are adapted or of good quality. We have maximum stock. The production manager should know the level at which he should not go out of stock in his production process. We have minimum security stock, means the stock which is there for security. The, the, stock, the level at which stock should not go beyond, beyond below, below. We have the other point, the point at which you should go for further, for further commands. What are the functions of material management? The first function is that of materials planning. Planning is all about setting in advance what, when, where, how, and for whom that material will be used for. We have procurement of material. Procurement is the purchasing of material, which is also a very important aspect in man material management. We have receiving and warehousing material. A warehouse is a place where goods are kept for future use. So we have to receive those materials and put somewhere. We have storage and store administration, which is also a very important aspect or functions of material management. Inventory control is also a very important function because we have to go around to know in detail, note down all the type of materials, if they are obsolete or they are depreciated, where or tear. We have standardization and simplification of materials because we have some materials that are standardized and some are simplified. Transportation and material handling is also very important because the movement of materials from one place to another, from one location to another, is also very important. We have material handling, which I'm going to say in a previous lesson in detail. Let's now see fellow candidate. what are the principles of material management. The first principle is that of effective management and supervision. When we have acquired material in an organization, we have to make sure that we supervise it. We go through to see that this material is well, properly used. It doesn't wear out. It's of good quality. Those who are working on it are working properly. We also have sound purchasing methods because the method of purchasing give person an order either at home or abroad matters because time, the material should be available at the right time. Skillful and hard poised negotiation because to acquire material, we have to be very skillful and talented and poised. Poised means we have to have certain links, relationship in order to acquire material because some materials, some parts are very difficult to obtain. So we have to be very, very tactful in order to acquire or purchase some materials. The effective purchase system is also very important because we should know the link or the secret or the channel of buying a particular material. The material should be simple. It should be adapted to all because it should not be a material where it's only one person that knows how to manipulate it or you bring a foreigner to manipulate that material. The material should be easily to use. Simple inventory control pr program. You can also lose an inventory control so that automatically when any material is lacking or is obsolete, we easily notice or identify it. Let's now see how can we mobilize material resources. And to mobilize material resources, we can go through three main phases. We have the planning phase, we have the implementation phase, and we have the evaluation phase in order to mobilize material resources. 
Let's now come to the planning phase. In the planning phase, the production manager has to forecast the types of materials in which he wants. What is the type of material you want? What material, which material is required in a production process? Which inputs you need in the transformation process and also the output? So you have to make sure that the type of material that you want, it is adapted. We also have to anticipate the quantity required because the quantity will determine the type or the type, the kind of material to, to purchase. There are some materials that cannot, that is not adapted to maybe heavy or many or bulky, bulky materials. In the implementation phase, the first aspect is that of resource identification. We have to define what type of resources do we have. Generally, we know that the manager has human manage human financial and material resources. So, what is the what is the source of material that we need? We have to identify the resource provider who is providing that particular material. We should not go in the open market or anywhere to buy material. We should make sure that the wholesale or the supply of material is has a standard international standard organization uh, visa or license to provide that particular material. How shall we acquire or acqu acquisition of materials? How shall we buy that particular resource? The right use of resources, material resources. The way we handle material resources is also very important. Seeking out new resources is also very important because when we seek out new resources, in order to, to, to provide, to produce a particular unit or product, it is also very important in the production department. The third phase of, of our mobilizing material resources is that of reporting and communication. Reporting and communication is also very important because we have to give a feedback to the top level management on any material that is lacking. Because if we identify the production manager, observe that a particular material is obsolete, is not functional, he has to give a report. Managers in business management give two types of reports. We have, we have, the, we have activity reports and also financial reports. But for the production manager, he has to work on a material report and communicate, inform the top level hierarchy on the, the availability or the need of, 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 of a particular material. Which he has, which he, he, that will enable him to be efficient or effective in his production unit. Let's now come to the solution of the problem situation. We earlier said Cindy is a young Cameroonian that has a bakery or a factory, and she wishes to know how to manage her material resources in her bakery. The first thing Cindy should do is that she has to know what is material management all about. Material management, in his definition, as we earlier said, is planning, organizing, pro procuring, storing of materials that will enable the human resource, the production manager, to be efficient and more effective. We also, she also needs to know the types or functions of material management. What are the types of materials she needs in her bakery? And what are the functions of each materials? She also has to know how to mobilize material resources, beginning with the planning phase, going through the implementation phase, and ending with the evaluation phase, where they have to do what we call reporting and communication. Senior also have to know the basic principles for managing materials. As we earlier, as we earlier saw, to manage material, we have to be very effective in managing and supervision. We have to be skillful and hard poised in negotiation. We have to make sure that we choose an effective and purchase, effective and good purchasing system. The materials that Cindy should buy should be simple. She should do what we call inventory control whenever she is in her bakery. Let's now come to an application exercise, fellow candidates. The first application exercise tells us about explain the importance of effective management. Explain the importance of effective material management. The second exercise is what type of material can a production manager use in his unit in order to increase efficiency? The third application exercise is, is, is to state and explain theory material management principles. Solution to exercises. Solution to the first exercise where we were asked to explain the importance of effective material management. 
Material management helps us to be mat that's the material cost content of total cost is kept in a risk at a reasonable reasonable level. It also helps us to properly utilize equipment, machinery, fixtures, and fittings in an organization. Material management also helps us help us in the loss of direct labor, that the loss of direct labor is avoided. Material management also helps us reduce or to limit the wastage of materials in an organization. Material management also helps us to supply materials promptly at the right time. Remember, we talk about the five hours of material management. Time is very important. We have to provide materials at the right quantity, at the right quality, at the right time, and also at the right place. Material management also helps invest help, helps in the investment on material. That's the investment that we have done on materials are kept under good control. That's what about inventory control and also quality management. Material management enables us not to be tight up or to be congested in the stores. So with material management, we know that we we'll avoid congestions or traffic in the stores or in the floor of the way of, of the production units. The second question was, what type of materials can a production manager use in his unit in order to increase efficiency? What type of materials can a production manager use in his unit in order to increase efficiency? The first type of material is that of raw materials. Raw materials are the inputs which are used to all transform into output. So we have to know that what are the types of raw materials that we are used to use. For example, Cindy in a problem situation, Cindy wants to operate in a big bakery. He has to make sure that the flour that she buys, the sugar, the yeast, and the other, the other, the other materials, raw materials that you, she can use to produce her bake, her bake bread and other, or, or, and, and, and other, other uh, bakery materials, products. Work in progress materials is also very important because we need equipment and machinery in the bakery, in his or her bakery. The oven. She can either use a manual or traditional oven or a modern oven that uses electricity. A manual oven uses firewood. So work in progress material like firewood, she should take that into consideration. The finished goods like bread, for the case of Cindy's bakery, she should also take that into consideration because the end product is what should be of good quality. Maintenance, repairs and operating supplies materials. The maintenance and repairs of materials is also very important. Because in order to increase efficiency, the materials that are used, you are using should be of good quality. And also you should have materials that can easily be repaired. The third exercise fellow candidate was to state and explain theory material management principles. We have so many principles where you could explain what effective management and supervision is. Because to handle material management, you have to effectively supervise those materials. You have to go around, go through, to know which material is, is obsolete, which material is performance in one way or the other. Sound purchasing method, how and where to purchase that particular material is also a very important principle. Skillful and hard poised negotiation. You have to be very tactful and skillful in the way you negotiate your materials. Effective purchase system means you have to know which system is adapted in order to purchase your material resources. The material resource should also be simple. You have to purchase a material which is simple to use by your employees. You also have simple inventory control programs. Fellow candidates, we have come to the end of our lesson. And before going, let's go through the summary of what we have discussed earlier. In the course of the lesson, we talk about the meaning and objective of material management. We also saw the types or functions of material management. We also talk about the basic principles for managing materials. What are the basic principles for managing materials? For our next lesson, you can jot this for the next lesson as, as a consolidation exercise. The first is to examine five requirements of a good material control system. What are five, you have to examine five requirements of a good material control system.
The second exercise is also to discuss on any three types of material management. Discuss on any three types of material management you can know or notice. Generally, fellow candidate, you as stereotypes try to use real world example, practical example, because we are in an operational or business unit structure. So use examples, use real life example, even in your writing or whenever you give an exercise or a program. So you state, explain, and give a real world example in your in it. Because what we have noticed is that when they say describe three types of material management, you just state and you go. Also give real examples. So during the next lesson, we are going to go through to really see if you have used the required approach or method. Before going, we have some few textbooks which you can go through to really have more details on how to manage materials in a production unit. The first book is that of Mr. Noon VGP, which was published in 2015. The name of the book is Business Organization and Management, an instructional manual for colleges and universities, is fifth edition, published in Boya. The second textbook is that of Anno Julius Mbanjong, that was published in this 2022. The name of the book is Business Management Today, a core course for advanced technical and vocational education, TVE in Cameroon, a practical approach, second edition, press book, PLC. Our next lesson fellow candidates of the advanced technical and vocational education will be on material handling. <laughs> On a tege majang mategendum, manetambia ninya ne jubyayen, gani bana matege mut, gani la kiri wategendong, esatina bia dinkido, manetambia ninya ne jubyayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike, manetambia ninya ne jubyayen.